Hello. Hello. John. Yeah, hi. It's Bill Landis. Hi. I have some hard-hitting facts for you, if what you want to hear them, all right? Are they good or bad? Uh, both. What, are they personal? Uh, career-wise, okay? Yeah. You know, in terms of the film business. Mm-hmm. First of all, because I'm a producer distributor now, I'm expected to like act in a certain way and uh, this and that. And uh, one thing I found out that uh, I don't know what it, I don't know. I think you you weren't aware of it. Like uh, remember when we were talking about making loops? Is that when you hire girls for a movie? I mean, uh, you sort of expect them to fuck you. I mean, if you actually hire them, uh, or you only hire the ones who do fuck you. You know, who offer it. You mean as a producer? Yeah, as a producer. I mean, it's expected, almost, you know. Goes with the territory, you know what I'm saying? Mm, I don't know if I agree with that. I th I'm telling you facts. I mean, everybody from uh, from Herschel Gordon Lewis to uh, Brian De Palma used to pull his dick out when girls used to come in to be interviewed by him. <laughs> Okay, the more important a person gets in the film business, like somebody who's like Warren Beatty, all right, uh, the the more bluntly they could get away with it. Oh, expecting that of other people. Yeah. Oh, but mm, that's uh, yeah, I could see that um, with those particular producers you mentioned. Yeah, but it, it goes all the way from the lowest budget up, all right. Well. It's true. I, I'm telling you facts. But it's not across the board. I mean, you can a girl can get hired uh, to act in a porn loop without uh, any kind of come on by the producer whatsoever. No, the uh, the way to stay away from any trouble is that you set up the situation where they offer it to you. You know what I mean? You don't, if, if you're not planning on hiring them, uh, especially, you don't promise them anything at all. You know? What do you mean? I mean, uh, there are people, there are people who promise all these girls, uh, parts and stuff and the yeah. girls fuck for it and they don't give them parts. Oh, right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Uh, with screen actors guilt, sometimes you could get, you know, they could complain to that, but usually they don't. Yeah, well, that's the legitimate business. It's probably more uh, rampant in the legit legitimate business than in porn. I think. I don't know, because uh, some people in porno movies, and uh, uh, I'm not going to mention any names now, have fucked and sucked like everybody in New York for parts and legit stuff and have ended up with like bit parts and legit stuff. And you can't promise them any anything because they fucked and sucked all these people. Yeah. Or even the smallest thing. Right. You know, I mean, uh, you know, this is all facts. And another thing is, in terms of pornography, you might think of broadening your horizons a little, it, it, like working in, as production manager and stuff like that, even, you know, more so than a actor, all right? Because in terms of pornography, you would not believe what a big stigma that is. In terms of being... In terms of the legit show is... You would not believe what a big stigma that is. No, I know about that. You don't. You don't know how uh, extent. If if you're a director who's associated, you know, with the stuff repeatedly, you can't go beyond like low budget things. I mean, you'll. You know, I mean, nobody in Hollywood will ever talk to you. You know, if you're if you work as production manager and stuff, or if you work on production part of it, it's sort of expected when you you go into low budget films that you might have done stuff like that, and nobody thinks anything of it. If you are an actor or actress in it, you know, uh, you know, don't exactly uh, expect legit showbiz stuff. Um, you're saying that uh, the stigma is worse for the for the talent, whereas if you're on crew, it's kind of accepted as a starting point? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, a lot. You know, I'm, uh, also, like, uh, in terms of, like, porno girls working in horror pictures, you know, I mean, uh, you know, the, like, Jamie's okay to use because Jamie was in the Sylvester Stallone movie, and Jamie was just in Joel's last movie, and blah, 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 but... Uh, Jamie uh, Gillis? Yeah, in terms of girl... Yeah, Jay, uh, he was in my partner's last movie, Night of the Zombies. He played a... Did he mention that at all? 
No. His first legit role, you know, starring role in a, in a non-fucking movie. Yeah. But in terms of girls, it's uh, audiences don't want to see, you know, audience driving audiences who go to see girls get hacked up and uh, cut up by psychos or ghouls don't find it sexy at all to see some porno girl like like uh, Terry Hall or uh, or Serena or whatever get cut up. They find it more sexy to see, uh, you know, fresh face get cut up, you know. Oh, yeah. You know, you know what I mean? Because, uh, you know, the girls like that are just deluding themselves, as they think. And, you know, look at your friend uh, Stevens there. He's always wanted to be in legit showbiz. Yeah. You know, what is he now? He's a washed-up 37-year-old. Oh, like, sure. I get, you know. Yeah, so is Jamie Gillis is very worried, too. He is? Yeah. He looks at what he's doing as just fucking around. He makes you know, a lot of it, Jamie. He looks at what he's been doing as just having been fucked or fucking around. Um, no, I, I think I, I know what you're, so good I've that, already known good, what you're saying. It's good that you're starting to work on other jobs, and it, like, if I was you, I'd stick to it. Well, yeah. did I already tell you I was doing production assistant? Yeah, you should start doing as much as that as you can, you know. But that was really hell. Go for work, and those production managers don't sleep. Production? I don't know if I have it in me. What? I don't know if I have it in me to do what they do. Uh-huh. I'm very skeptical about that. I mean, I, I was thinking I wanted to work from production assistant to uh, production manager, but... Well, you know what you have to do for production manager? You have to break down the entire script. It takes about a week of, of work, you know, before uh, anything's beginning. You have to break down the entire script scene by scene and find out what's needed and what it's all going to cost. You know, that's step one. Step two is working on the movie. Yeah, that's part of it. But... Uh, I just mean that the uh, amount of tension that these guys go through, go through, and and uh, the biggest thing is that they don't. They're people who don't mind not sleeping, you know, just working completely through the night, and or taking a nap at some point. Well, well, eventually somewhere they conk out, but not. They can't even do that for long. I mean. Just the way they killed them, themselves physically. In yeah, other words, it's extremely that. unhealthy, and that's really a disappointment to me that they have to live that, do it that way. Yeah, I'm, uh, I'm very afraid of that because, uh, because I can't go that long without sleep, and you know, when I'm, I'm shooting this thing, you know, uh, you know, that's, uh, it's inevitable that's going to happen. You know? Yeah, without sleep and without eating too. You know, I mean, they eat, but I mean, they don't care if they. They have their mind on what they're doing so much. That that was the big discouraging thing. I when I was working as a production assistant, I only got four or five hours of sleep most of the time, and I only had in the thirteen days I only had a few hours to myself. So well, that, like, that happens on every movie. But I was getting a lot of sleep compared to them. Did you get high a lot? No. Oh. But anyway, I have. I don't know. If you ever thought otherwise, but I've never had any dis, uh, aspirations to be a legitimate actor. Not at all. Uh, so I don't care. Another, I'll tell you another thing. Of uh, in terms of legitimate actors and of course actresses, they're not really respected by anybody. You know, unless unless they're big. You know, I mean, they're just they're not. You know, what I mean, they're not really respected by. You. When you tell if if I tell people uh, I, w I was going to act in such and such a movie, they wouldn't respect me. When I'm say when they say uh, I'm producing this film, you know, they look at me differently. It's totally different. I mean, uh, uh, I mean, like eighty thousand people come to New York and L.A. every year to be legitimate actors and actresses. Right. Right. Yeah. I have, some, I have some dirt on your friend Jamie there. Oh, you got some more dirt, huh? Did I tell you about the Arab bar? No. Oh, yeah, when the when they went to Munich to shoot Night of the Zombies, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, you know, Joel Strait and everything. And Jamie, and two days after they're in Munich, Jamie goes, I found this great bar. We're going to get loaded in it. And uh, he goes to Joel, and it's a working class Arab migrant, a Turk migrant worker, homosexual bar. And there's all these greasy Arabs with full man chew mustaches in there. And Jamie's there grabbing their thighs, going, Hey, Joel, get yourself an Arab. Wow. Joel just walked out and left them there. <laughs> and then, uh, 
Uh, according to what I heard, your friend Jamie's a complete masochist, and he's very into getting fucked in the ass. Hmm. You know, he'll, know he'll, say, uh, he'll say that he's dominant and everything. He'll say, uh, you know, I'm going to piss on them, beat them up. Well, he's into both, yeah. <laughs> I guess. He'll say that. He'll say that. And he'll, you know, like, tomorrow I'm going to conquer the world, but today uh, I'll let you take a piss in my mouth, you know, but only for today, you know. <laughs> and also Joel said that, uh, you know, when I get together with Jamie, I shouldn't start bringing up things like uh, piss and getting fucked in the Who ass. is Joel? My partner. Oh, yeah, right. Uh... Because he'll get, because he'll get overexcited. Mm. Uh, Joel worked as a consultant on one of the Damiano movies. Mm -hmm. He didn't get along that well with Damiano. What's his full name? Uh, Joel Reed. Yeah, I've heard that name. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I'm sure you have. And uh, he said he he walked into a room and Jamie was there getting fucked up the ass by uh, another actor who was punching him and stuff. <laughs> Good. Good for him. So I'm surprised he didn't try to pull anything with you. Yeah, no, he was very quiet and didn't do anything. I'm very surprised. He just smoked his uh, smelly cigars or tobacco or whatever he had. And... That's it. But, uh, you know, also, you know, also I'm like legitimately in this now. You know what I mean? I'm not a... You know, I'm not a critic anymore, so to speak. I mean, I don't restrict myself. To, I don't say that. Can, can you still be a critic? I, of course. Yeah. yeah I'm course. doing it more than ever, actually. Um, so, what's you know, the I full line of stuff job. that you're distributing? What's the complete line of what you got? Well, we're, we're buying two Kung Fu movies within the month. And... Uh, you know, I'm looking to pick up other things. I might have Blood Feast and 2000 Maniacs uh, soon. You know, the, uh, the all the distribution rights for because some some poor guys out in the Los Angeles paid a lot to get the worldwide rights to everything on them from this real bastard who owned them. Hmm. And uh, you know, the uh, this guy's very sold on my ability to handle them because he read my interview with Herschel Gordon Lewis, and uh, he knows about Sleazoid Express. Also, Sleazoid Express is going to become a regular magazine with pictures and uh, you know, big layout, and that's going to be handled by my friend in California. I still write all the copy for the next three issues, but after that, I'll start getting paid for each article. And uh, all the mailing and all the uh, clerical work will be done by his word processor. Who is he? Type, his name is Straw Wiseman. Mm -hmm. So I just type them up and send them out to him, you know, all the reviews, you know. Great. When are you going out to California, to L.A.? Uh, in the next three months, I hope. You know, I'd like to learn to drive before I go there, you know. Oh, yeah. Do you think you'll go up to San Francisco at all? I don't know, you know, I mean, uh, I know so many people in L.A., I don't, I know like two people in Frisco, you know. San what I mean? Francisco. What? Don't say Frisco. Why? It's not, San Franciscans don't like it. Really? Yeah. Um. <laughs> Why? I can't. No, it's, it's, they just don't, it's, it's just not something that they call themselves. Uh, there's two events this week, I, I was wondering if you knew anything about them. Uh, one is on Thursday night, there's this, uh, some association here in the East, um, a critics association in X-rated field. They're having some kind of, I don't know if it's a dinner or what, uh -huh. or a banquet or, and Friday is a the AFAA awards here in New York. Here in New York? Yeah. Well, I don't know if they're the, I don't know what they are. Uh, the Adult Film Association. No, I mean, I don't know who would be involved in that. Yeah, I was wondering if you could find out somehow. I'd like to go to either one of those or both, but... One thing about me is I have to be very careful. You know, I like you, I like Jamie, I like a lot of people, but I have to be very careful who I associate with now. You know what I mean? Why? Because I'm not, I'm not into... Uh, I'm not remotely connected with hardcore in any way, and I would never want to be. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Yeah. You know, it's, uh, you know, when you get into, like, all this, uh, you know, legit stuff, you know, it's a different ball game. 
Your friend Lisa was surprised to to hear that uh, any girls who are going to be in that movie have to get fucked by me and my partner. What? You know? What? Lisa Baumgartner? Yeah, I saw her a couple of months ago. She seemed very uh, perturbed to hear that. You know. She didn't believe it. She seemed very upset. All right. Now that I I refer to cunts as broads, you know. Wow. You know. You said my friend Lisa isn't she your friend anymore? <laughs> I don't I don't really talk to her that much, you know. Yeah. I mean, uh. She's moving out, you know. She is. Where's she, she going to? She's getting her own ap- apartment in the same building. Really? Mm-hmm. So, are you at work? No, nah, I was homesick the last two days. Want to come over and watch a movie? Which one? Anything. I don't know. I don't know. But, yeah, like, uh... Like, th- I don't know, like, things changed a lot from the mid-70s. Mm-hmm. So, uh... Also, the cost of making a movie has, uh... Like increased like radically. I mean, Joel oh, I made Joel made uh, Incredible Torture Show in 1976 for 70 grand, and uh, he made Night of the Zombies for about the same. And that was two years ago, and that's like an impossibility to make that even two years ago for that money. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, that's did J- Jamie didn't set, mention anything at all about that. Mm-hmm. No, no. Did you meet Chris Warfield out in Frisco? No, no. Um, he wasn't casting or producing while I was there. He's, uh, he, you know, he's in all his movies. Is he? He puts yeah. himself in. Yeah. You know, uh, and also he made these packages. He, in the early seventies, he made some like very strong softcore movies, and he cut them. He cut. They're like soft axes, but they're they're like borderline hardcore. And he cut them to Oz, and he sold them to cable, and he packaged them in like triple features out on like the the western states. Hmm. And they're all playing out there like Norma, Little Miss Innocence, because I know a guy who buys video stuff from him. You know, yeah. buys like the the uh, HBO rights to them. Yeah, I want no, to, I, I, I want to acquire this movie, The Killing of America. Uh, they've already sold it to HBO, though. I don't want to see the end of March on Ed. You know what I mean? I don't plan to. And the thing is that I'm going to have enough money to live on for a while from the newsletter because that thing in the LA Times will be out before the end of March. And I got a hundred subscriptions with money off the bat from uh, the Boston Phoenix. Mm-hmm. And it's a shitty little paper in Boston. And I got like a hundred subscriptions from that. So just multiply that. You know what I'm saying? Well, wow. you know, you know what I mean. So I'm gonna have. Of course, I split the uh, I split the money fifty fifty, and I got ten percent of any profit. That's the uh, financial arrangement with the new publisher. But, uh, you know, still, if I get, like, uh, if I get even 500 subscriptions for it, that's four grand split. Uh, that's two grand right in my pocket. That's you know, enough to live on for two months. Yeah, you don't need Con Ed anymore. Yeah, fuck them. Hmm. Fuck them, you know. That's good. You wouldn't believe it. I mean, they actually like me, though, lately. They do? <laughs> yeah, they think I'm a very, uh, I can't fool them that I'm stupid. I've tried a very... <laughs> I can't help but I've tried a lot, but but they don't believe I'm as stupid as I, I've tried to act there, you know. <laughs> That's funny. It is it is funny. Also the I have this kid who's my boss now, this this twenty seven year old who's been in like the company for nine years. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He thinks he thinks he's gonna do development work on me as a person, you know. Oh he... <laughs> I love that, you know. Wow. I told like three people there. I said, you know, I'm not as dumb as I seem. I, I, I run a newsletter. I write freelance, and I run my own small business. <laughs> I'm not as stupid as I seem. You know, I told I told like three people there. Yeah. That already, you know, they were kind of aghast. But you only get paid once a month there, right? Mm-hmm. So like next week, I'm gonna get the check. And if some things are set up, I, it might be opportune for me to leave then, if not later. 
But uh, I was thinking of just like keeping the money for the entire month and wondering if they'd make an issue out of it. Hmm. You know what I mean? Because you get paid for that up to the 10th, it would inclu- be inclusive up to the 10th. And then, of course, they owe me for like 10 vacation days. You know, but that still leaves like a few days in March. And they probably will make an issue out of it. I don't know. I don't, you know, the way companies are, you know. Yeah. Hmm. Have you heard of um, Kurt McDowell? Oh, yeah, sure. What about him? Uh, well, I've been reading about him in San Francisco. His inter- There was a lot of interviews, et cetera, and articles about him in the different newspapers up there. Different, uh, and I didn't get to see any of his films, though. I have. What are they like? Uh, all right, in terms of Thundercrack, it's sort of an imitation John Waters movie. Mm-hmm. It has hardcore sex in it as part of the story. It's in black and white. If it was 90 minutes, it would be very funny, but because the version I saw was like two hours, and I heard there's like a two and a half and three hour versions, it's very self indulgent. I mean, it's very, it gets very boring to watch. Uh, it was just that, that running time killed it. Mm-hmm. I mean, like, movies shouldn't be more than 90 minutes. Unless it has a good excuse. Unless it's like utterly fascinating. But because it was so long, it rubbed a lot of people the the wrong way. Like when I spoke to John Waters, he said that he walked out on it. Oh, God. Well, Waters walks out a lot. If he gets bored, he just walks out. You know what I mean? If something's really horrible, he'll stay for the first 15 minutes and then he'll leave. And... Uh, what theaters here in New York are showing such movies? You know, Waters and Kurt McDowell and all... They revived Thundercrack. Thundercrack was a midnight movie at the late lamented Elgin Theater seven years ago. But That's how old it is. And then it played at St. Mark's Theater about a year ago. A little more than a year ago. What theaters are showing movies like that now, any? Not really. I mean, because... Waters always pops up. In it's San Francisco... Uh, Waters is a favorite here, you know. In San Francisco, they've been showing all over the place, all of them. McDowell? Well, McDowell's from out there, you know. Yeah, he's from there, no. I mean, everything. See, I need to get caught up on, on Warhol, because I just got to see Trash, but I didn't get to see anything yeah, else. Yeah, there's some good garbage on 23rd Street. Remember the welfare inspector? No. At the end? You saw Trash? Oh, that, yeah, yeah. Remember that? The oh, yeah, I remember that, sure. Yeah, I remember that, sure. Remember that Joe? Remember when he, when he ODs in that couple's apartment? They walk him around there. Yeah, I love that whole movie. I've seen it like four times. Yeah, I think it's good. <laughs> I really liked it. I like it a lot. In my sick mind. But I want to see uh, more of his stuff. I, I really need to get caught up. So, what do you want to do? More acting jobs? I'm going to, of course. Why? Do you think I should stop? No. You know. Uh, I'm not worried about reputation. I mean, uh, for one thing... Uh, You're not going to try to be a legit actor. I'm not going to try to be a legit actor. And the other thing is, I'm a long way from being uh, well-known anyway. Yeah. I mean, I'm like light years from, you know, carrying a stigma that Jamie carries, because who the hell knows? You know, people still don't know who the hell he is. But Jamie's escaped it in a way because he was in the Stallone movie that made him okay for other people. Yeah, that's to true. Use him. Yeah. Also, also, uh, stigma is more severe on actresses. Right. That's it's, it's a lot. That's more. also true. Yes, definitely. You know what I mean? Yeah. Somebody, somebody like Mark. I don't think Mark, anyone ever takes Mark seriously. Well, yeah, that's just the way Mark is. That's Mark's own personality. He's just all fucked up, and you know what I mean. I just, I don't. How can I? Exp- I don't think that anybody takes him that seriously because of his background as a prostitute and stuff. Yeah. You know what I mean? Uh, I mean, a lot of people have done stuff like that, like uh, allegedly James Dean, you know, mm-hmm. but, uh, but I mean, you don't, you don't say it openly. Like Kenneth Anger has a photo of Marlon Brando sucking uh, Wally Cox's dick. And it's not a keyhole photo. It's like a very, it's like a very artistically done photo, you know, like artistic pornography. Hmm. So you didn't see Thundercrack at all? No, I, you know, if I would have stayed in San Francisco, I almost decided to stay in San Francisco longer because I, I got these, like, all these pamphlets from these theaters from all these movies that I wanted to see. I mean, I was almost going to stay there just to see the movies. 
What, like the Strand and those places? Yeah, the place called the Strand, the Roxy. The, no, not the Rock. Uh, you like Cherry Harry and Rock Cal. That, that, all, the, all the time they're showing Russ Meyer movies, Warhol movies, John Waters and yeah. Kurt McDowell. Not so much McDowell, but enough. And, uh, you know, really great to get caught up on everything. But, uh, yeah, what you saw? Oh, yeah, the other, some other stuff I saw. I don't know how much this interests you. I also saw Metropolis and yeah, Nesferatu and uh, I've seen those. Cabinet of Dr. Caligula. Yeah, I like that a lot. Yeah. The, the Eagle at the Sleepwalker. Yeah. Yeah, I like that. I saw those on Market Street. But the, what, what Myers did you see? So find us, keep his love as we... Yeah, Up. Yeah, Up isn't that good. Beyond the Valley of the Dolls, yeah. or Beneath the Valley of the Dolls. I don't remember which one anymore. Did you see uh, Cherry Harry and Raquel? The one in the desert with the uh, this cop that's about a pot smuggling ring. What's the name of that one? Cherry Harry and Raquel. No, I, I didn't see oh, that one. That always plays with Find His Keep His Back East. Mm, back no, East. it didn't this time. Some of them I thought were good, some of them not so good. Yeah, the later ones aren't that good. Did you meet Alex Dorenzi or anyone like that? No. His theater is now a gay place, too. Really? Mm hmm. Your friend Joe Gage releases a lot of low budget horror, like really crappy low budget horror. Hmm. You know, about over here. Yeah, uh. Dorenzi's theater was called the Screening Room. It's now a gay place. It's not far from where my apartment is. I can walk to it easily. Same with uh, Mitchell Brothers, just down the street. Meet them at all? No, like they're they're so high up in their business world. I mean, I mean they they think of a lot more than making films now. I think. And uh, they must do pretty well. Yeah. And they have their video store and so forth. I mean, video retail stores and distribution of video tapes. And I got to uh, explore North Beach. I found that pretty exciting. Get any pussy out there? Where the beatnik era began. Only on film. Only on film. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, your friend Joe Sano there gave Joel his start in movies. Oh. Because the first movie Joel made was Korea Bed, and uh, I think Joe Sano was supposed to make it. And uh, Joe says, "You think you could do this? You know, go ahead. You know, they're good friends." Yeah, I thought that uh, Joel um, did not want his name attached to a hardcore pornography, but I've seen his name on posters. Joel Reed? No, I mean uh, Joe Sano. Yeah, he's uh, he does everything. But I mean, he's he can he does put his name on posters. Yeah, he don't give a shit. Yeah. He's been around for a while. Yeah, yeah uh, Joel's made two softcore movies, Korea Bad Sex by Advertisement. And he made uh, Dragon Lady, Bloodbath, Night of the Zombies, and The Incredible Torture Show. Wow. So when did you meet him? Uh, January. No, December. Late December. How did you meet him? Actually, I pulled him up by chance when Blood Feast was playing. Hmm. It was love at first sight, you know. <laughs> right. Really? No, we hit it off. That's great. He thinks like you do. Yeah. Yeah, Joel's like a father. Good. Well, that was... that was. It's good that that has happened. I mean, glad to see you're succeeding. Yeah. We just have to get a few more things off the ground, and I could... Yeah, I could tell some people go to hell. So you're just distributing in New York, though, right now, right? No, nationally. No, if I do anything, it would be on a national basis. Well, how do you do that without having partners all over the country? No, you use either subs or you call the theaters up yourself. Mm -hmm. Distribution is a very nine-to-five-ish, uh, you know, sort of, uh, you know, re re sort of standard business. You know, yeah, very I, exotic I guess, yeah, I guess I would be better off I, I think I would rather get into distribution and production. I'm not sure, though. No, with porno distribution, the way it's handled a lot is prints are sold outright to certain people mm -hmm. because some companies don't want anything attached to them about crossing state lines, so things are sold outright to different people along the way. 
Um, I don't know exactly what you mean. Uh, so you know, so you know what I mean. So, so one company doesn't say they're distributing it nationally because that means they're moving obscenity across state right. lines. If that happens, right. they sell to a sub distributor or somebody who wants to handle that in, in a certain state or territory, and they actually sell prints to them outright. I see. Of, uh, collecting rental off it, rather than collecting yeah. rental. Yeah, I got you. That's why there's prints that play today in New York of films that are eight years old, and there's cuts in them, and the cuts aren't made out of uh, censorship, but because the prints are falling apart. But um, isn't that still selling something across state lines? or No, they don't want their names attached to it. Or I mean, when they sell... Films. Okay, when they sell a print to a sub-distributor in some remote location, they're still selling something across state lines, but it's different because that I think it's that somehow they don't get respond they they try to they try to uh shift the responsibility for it to somebody else. Yeah, well the sub distributor who's buying it outright. I'm not exactly sure how it works it myself because the one thing I'd never do is, is that is sell stuff directly to anyone. Also, sub-distributors are real slime, and they steal from you. Right. They're, they're very slimy. Mm. You know, it's like the nature of the business. They they skim stuff. I know. You know, they play, yeah. it where they play it without you knowing it. You know, very... So the theater managers skim them? Yeah. It all starts with the person who, who works in the box. Yeah, yeah. He skims the manager, the manager yeah. skims the sub-distributors, the sub-distributors skim the yeah. national distributor, and the national distributor skims the producers. <laughs> yeah. There's no end. You know Chris McCloud at all? No. Juliet Graham? No. That's her stage name. Hmm. Who is she? No, I met her recently. Actually, she's an old girlfriend of Jamie's. Yeah, I don't know her. She was an American dreamer, too. What's her name again? Chris McLeod. Yeah, no, I don't know her. Yeah, I asked her if she knew you. She said no? Yeah. Yeah, she'd heard of you, but... She said she had heard of me? Yeah, yeah. vaguely. That your name rang a bell. Yeah, that kind of thing. That's quite frequent. That that happens. So you're still going to see a friend, Mark? Yeah, well, there's a party on the 18th. I'll do the usual thing, go get tickets and go to the party. It's the usual thing. So. So your friend Jamie's very worried about uh, getting lost. Well, yeah, I mean, he, like, says he's just he does. I, I think. I think he's concerned about what he's going to do next. You know, yeah. Since he's, you know, can't keep on doing porn forever. He seems to get an awful lot of roles. Yeah, right. Because he just got the lead role in this Return of Constance Money thing. Really? That was done in San Francisco while I was there. Yeah. What? Who is she really? She's an actress that, uh, I guess was in the business dropped out and dropped out and then this is a film about her comeback but from what I hear she's only going to do that and I mean she's doing she did that film and that's it she's not going to continue doing more because she looked very attractive in Misty Bates sort of an all-American type 